Divious, thank you for joining us. You're watching our weekly program, Talk to OBN, on OBN Horn of Africa, your favorite media channel. Today, I brought you a very media-worthy topic, uh, and you are, you're going to hear it in Deb's letter, and you're going to hear from the horse's mouth. I am here in Zoma Kinterkarten, and I joined by uh, a very hardworking, enthusiastic, and persistent uh, a woman, Maskaram Asagir. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming. All right, and I am here uh, to uh, have a conversation with you about Zoma School, which is a working per the recommendation of the 21st uh, century of teaching and learning philosophy. Correct. And I need you to tell us the overall picture of this school okay. and every staff. Okay. Well, um so my school is, um, is about building students to become curious, um, to love to learn, and also to ask so many questions. That's really what we want to build in the students, and we want to have children who become leaders. Not necessarily leaders of a country or anything, but leaders in general. In other words, even leading their own lives. Um, confident students. So we have the whole, the whole thing that we teach here is hands-on. So children associate everything they learn to what they do in life. And that way the education comes right through them. Rather than sticking it actually on their body, it actually goes into their system. So that's the kind of uh, education we do here. Um, and we have uh, a small number of students 15 students per classroom and the two, two full teachers for each classroom and uh, we our philosophy is to mix these children for instance first second my dream is to mix actually three classes first second and third grade together this way uh, the students learn more from each other when the students learn from each other they learn more so the teachers job is to teach the older students lesson and help them so they can become their own teachers. Uh, dear viewers, uh, let's go and see the practical implementation of uh, Zoma's uh, teaching and learning philosophy which is coined by Maskaram Asagit. I would like to take you directly to the classroom then to the outdoor practical session. Let's go. Okay. We teach in a way that's, uh, that you're going to see here. It's a little bit different, our teaching techniques. Um, like I said, part of the thing is to give these children the love of learning. So when we mix students, we mix students in a way that different age group sit together. And uh, the, the students help each other. For instance, one student can help the other. Um, if they know more than the other kid, they, they help through this helping they actually even learn the subject better so we have older children here and younger children in the classroom this is our way of teaching uh, for instance um, when they do work so when they do some kind of activity we have a very very strong teacher here our teachers are amazing so we have two teachers who are full teachers um, we don't have teachers aid and teacher full teacher so they split the classroom into into two or when one is teaching the other one helps the students um, uh, coordinate how they're learning so this is how um, so this is how we do a hands-on education because the teachers are close to the teachers and we only have 15 students per classroom okay. this is our policy uh, we have uh, six classes altogether okay. we have six All classes the paper works done in the classroom right yeah but the more so what we try to do well, you can see a child here for instance working um, but doing his own drawing yeah and we encourage them to do that okay. uh, because we want them to bring out what they know and then work on that based on, uh, on what they know so it's not um, our education system is understanding observing them and understanding where their levels are and then bring out what their talents are so that's what the teachers are helping them with we we encourage them to be creative on their paper and we based on that for instance he just passed his paper to another child here uh, maybe they're they're collaborating that wasn't your paper no 
Yeah, it's the the it's the paper of the. Okay. And so. Ah, okay. So, the, in other words, they're very, um, they very—they talk, they help each other. Um, so this is this is how you know. For instance, when we have a child who is um, in you know categorized as a special need, maybe with autism or something like that, we mix that child in this group. We, the only thing is we don't we don't want people to know who they are because we address them by their first names, uh, not by their condition, but their names. The, therefore, the, the students help each other. In, the, in this kind of education. So you can see, like, they're, they're, they're free to explore what they know, but we teach them basic education, for instance, mathematics, science, um, and everything is hands-on. So from their classroom all the way to what they're doing outdoors, um, the, what the teachers do is, like, enhance their knowledge. Because we have small classroom, the teachers have an opportunity to work with them closely. So we're going to see the playground, the then we go to the garden, the milking spot, the kitchen, okay. the farming, all stuff, right? Well, we have, and uh, most of our activities are done outside of okay. the classroom, okay. um, because we believe that um, uh, they learn, um, they learn w better when they are in an environment where they can see more. Okay. For instance, here's one big uh, thing that I want to tell you. In a classroom, when, they, when students sit in the classroom for a long period of time, they only see a very short distance with their eyes. It's between the wall and their eyes. The space is short. Mm -hmm. When they're outside, it's yeah, open. Yeah, that's and that actually builds their muscles in their eyes mm -hmm. and it avoids eye illness. So what we do also helps them physically to become healthy. So teaching students outside is very important. They do have them in this playground, right? Yes, yes. It's a, it's an it's a normal earth so when they fall they don't hurt themselves but they um yeah they this is a very important the physical activities now we have our students come from very different background from economic background and also um mental stability or state background uh, but we believe that all of them are very smart and all of them can do um, everything, they, all their tasks. Um, so there is no abnormal kid. They're all normal. They're all special, and that's what we believe, and and that's what we want to instill in them. So the students actually help each other. When we when we have a child who is not physically, um, who has physical difficulties or m mental difficulties, because they're smarter, <laughs> or there or something is you know something is makes them very different. Uh, we, ha we learned that the students actually embrace that and they become their friends and they learn more. What is the secret behind all this uh, philosophies and this, this, this new paradigm in, in teaching and learning yeah. classes of 21st century? Uh, of course, you've yeah. been uh, living overseas for a long period of time, right? Tell me about that experience. Are you... Uh, I mean, influenced the, yeah. with the experience that you have yeah. obtained overseas, though. Well, I tell you what: living abroad and living, growing up in this country, one thing you learn is you understand the the ugliness of racism, the ugliness of people um, judging one another because they're different. You don't fit. You fit, or this or that. You know. Um, so what we want to instill in the children here is that they're human beings. So what we teach them is what they want. What we want these children to take out from here is how to be human. In other words, there is no tall person, there is no short person, there is no black, white, fat, skinny, sick or healthy. Children are there children. Is human beings, human right? beings are human beings. Mm -hmm. And if we, if there is anything we want to, this, this our students to become. We want them to become humans who accept all humanity. They do paperwork and this uh, practical lessons in the classroom. Then they just uh, come to this playground for recreation. Then they go to other places, a milking a spot, a kitchen and farming activities, gardening. They do activities there, right? Now we are going to... Uh, do that activity with you. You're going to tell us all the practical session in which your students enroll most of the time. Let's go there. Okay. Uh, 
So this is their music class, and the classroom is set up to look like an amphitheater. Yeah. And their teacher sits there, they, they learn, they also learn how to play the piano, but he also uses the piano when they sing. He teaches them how to read music, mm -hmm. all the different um, notes and the different sounds. Uh, so they do voice training as well. So, and they have different instruments, the guitars, the um, accordion, and, uh, and the piano, and they also have drums, or even these bottles are musical instruments. So the idea is um, for them to learn and be accustomed to these instruments, uh, especially for the children who are uh, identified as autistic children. They, uh, music is one of the biggest therapies we use here, mm -hmm. and they love to be here, they're incredible musicians, mm -hmm. and we're also putting them to learn how to play the instruments. Well, the design, normally the way I like to see design is to follow the natural process. So as you can see, the land itself is on a hill. So um, because it's on a hill, we use the space itself to create... Um, you just add uh, aesthetic beauty on it without aesthetics, distracting. Correct. Right. Aesthetics and also make it usable, okay. uh, user-friendly. Mm -hmm. So here, because the land is tilted, we turn it into an amphitheater. Mm -hmm. So the children can sit here. They also have an outdoor amphitheater. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of theater there. There's sports and everything. And we do circus as well. This is not just a kitchen. This is a classroom. Oh, okay. I mean, this is a normal classroom. Oh, right, right. So the students come here to learn how to cook, but through cooking, they learn math, science, physics, um, whatever their subject is. Okay. Um, they learn, um, uh, yeah, everything they need to learn, language and all. Um, so as you can see, there is a whiteboard here. Okay. So the teacher writes it down. They bring their papers here. They write, they calculate, for instance, if there are four potatoes mm -hmm. and there are eight mm -hmm. students, how many times do you cut the potatoes? Mm -hmm. Uh, to spread it among four, okay. four kids, that's division. Yeah, that's mathematics. That's mathematics. Yeah. Um, or they learn colors, they learn uh, also, you know, how to eat healthy. Because mm. we don't do white flour here, we don't do sugar here, we don't, there's so many yeah. things we don't do in the kitchen. Mm. Uh, but we want them to get used to um, healthy food. So we use a lot of fruit and vegetable. Of course, they farm, so they bring the, the farm food here yeah. and they cook yeah. with that, yeah. Oh, get, get she, in a, she, she is the mother of this kitchen okay. and she is the one who actually uh, help assist, assist them here yeah. but, they, but they walk in here with their teachers. They, the children actually cook, they make injera, yeah. they make what, they make, um, they make uh, all kinds of, they make fruit salad like you see the, some yeah, of the yeah, fruit yeah. there, yeah so they, they do it fresh. One of the things the way we cook here is we use biogas from the cows, all their manure and the toilet becomes fire. So this is the biogas, so this is what we use, uh, the recycled system. So the students also know how biogas works. Students do uh, milking here, right? Yes. They okay. come in the morning, okay. they come in the morning and they milk. Okay. So they milk, uh, so the cow's names are written, listed, right? listed on top, so they know Matebe is, that's uh, the cow they milk. Um, she is dedicated for the students, so they know her. So uh, the, the, the milk product, they turn it into um, yogurt, uh, um, aib or um, cottage cheese, uh, and they turn it into aguat, um, uh, which is um, uh, curd, um, and, um, and uh, also different types of milk product. So they, the, the students know the process of doing that. Uh, we have restaurants here, they use it, and we also, whatever we, uh, we have left over, uh, we, it's rented, so we have people who come and collect milk. It's, it's, it's a small farm, as you can see. We don't have a big farm, but what we have, we, uh, the neighborhood people come in. The first thing they do when they start school is they come here to sit under the cows and then they start milking. And we have our uh, assistants here who help them with that. And they, um, they only, um, after the first time, they get used to it. And they know how to get the milk out. And they become, you know, over time, they become really good. So every classroom has their own bucket. And um, it's there's only the students uh, who milk, and depending on how much they milk, is how much they take to the to the kitchen. So yeah. they learn also uh, measurement, um, weight, and um, all the milk process is educational. Hello, my name is Joanna Diso. I'm in Zoma. I'm grade three. I'm in blue class. I'm going to show you about how to milk.
Well, now we go to the garden. Jivers, still you're watching uh, activities being undergone in Zoma School. Now we are outdoor here. It's very green and beautiful. It's a place to be. And uh, Madame Mascaram used to tell us the activities so far. Now she's going to tell us about the beauty and the aesthetic all maintained here. Now we head to... Now we're heading to the... We're going to pass the rabbits and then we're the going to go to the garden here. Right? Yeah. Um, they were gifts that were given to us. Um, if you ask me which family they are, I cannot answer it right now, no. in all honesty. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, but these rabbits are very, um, very friendly and they love to eat and the students do feed them and they take care of them. Mm. So. Yeah, they eat fresh vegetables from the garden and um, yeah, the students actually learn how to take care of them, hold them and you see this is built for the rabbits to play and to, because the rabbits need to, uh, mm. to jump and okay. to run around to make them healthy, you know, you can't just make people healthy, you have to make all your animals healthy. So they, they need to exercise like all of us, so this is their exercise run. Here we have the, the, the sheep. And the students come here also to learn about the sheep and they also... Just the idea of them being with the animals is, is so important. But th there's an interesting thing that they learn here also. The sheep here, the, the way that we build the housing is different from the way we build the house for the, for the goats or for the chicken. Um, so you will see that when we go to the next room. But the, uh, there's another behavior here that the sheep has. When new babies are born in the goat uh, den, we bring the baby sometimes here because they, um, the sheep really take care of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, and sometimes there are some aggressive uh, goats there that can hurt the goats. So this is why we bring the sheep here, so the, the goats here, so they can grow up here and then they can go there in the evening and so um, there is some kind of helping each other on how they. Mm, it's part of the uh, yeah, like these two are goats. Mm, mm. So there is the sheep baby. Um, Would they feed them? No, right? They, they, they I mean, they, they become part of it. They, um, they take care of them. They actually protect them. They protect, but they yeah. never. Uh, feed no, because them they goats. go back to to be fed. Mm. Now we're going to the sheep to the goat house. So in here you have the goats. So they have this area for the goats, so because they need to have this height to go up and down. Um, even though we take them out also to play around. Um, but here, um, they also, as you can see, the feeding area for that one is on two sides. You see the, the, both mm. the sheep mm. eat from each side, yeah. but here it's one side. Mm. It's, it's because this is the kind of behavior they have. Yeah. Um, so uh, you have to understand their the personalities, the, yeah, the, 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 the natural, the, the nature. You see the, the, the little goats, for instance? The younger goats. Yeah. Uh, depending on how endangered they'll be here, we move them to the other room. And you see uh, two goats in that room. Mm. So that's to protect them from the goats here. Mm, okay. And then in the evening, they, they stay here during the day. And in the evening, they go into the other room. We use all their, um, all their waste material for for fertilizing. for fertilizing and back here what you see is also a fertilizing compost, compost that we do but we also leftover food from the students left leftover food in the restaurants uh, all the waste food um, comes here to become compost now we are heading to uh, outdoor classroom for the student right um, the, it's a classroom so um, the students an outdoor classroom it's an outdoor classroom and like i said many of their education takes place outdoors. The students actually um, use this classroom to learn a lot of things about gardening, plants. And we have an amazing teacher here who's been doing interesting things with their plants. Yes? This is our garden class. And when we are learning uh, garden, most of, uh, most of the time we'll use uh, practical things like the seed. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use things as a We'll use the seed, we'll start from the seed and we'll grow, we'll grow the seed, then after that we'll use as a food. This is our garden class and we have lots of seeds like bean, rice, 
um, uh, kidney. We have a lot of seeds and we plant it. We prepare our garden bed and then we paint it and we put in a uh, soil and we plant a uh, um, potato and when the potato ready we harvest and take to the kitchen and we cook we cook it and we cook uh, we cook a uh, plants when the plants ready and and we watering every day we we plant in a eggshell uh, using throw cup we don't we don't throw anything in the garden uh, on, in the morning we watering uh, we water the plants and we have a uh, lots of uh, garden tools and we learn about uh, plant plant part, parts of plants and we prepare a compost with animal dugs and we put in a garden bed we, we have gar garden rules okay. uh, we wear uh, boots when we come in the garden room okay. uh, we have a book and we write and uh, we write and the uh, like the uh, sim uh, seed names seeds name and we have we water in them we, we plant them and we learn my name is Victor Elias. I am from Blue Class and then I'm grade four. What we learn in the garden is how to take care of plants. Like we give the plants water, manami, and, and then we go in the class and we learn about um, something and then we come out and then we, we do it. What we learn there, we do it here. You do it here practically, right? Yeah. For instance, example. Like, if we learn there how to take care of the tools or how to um, how to um, plant a seed, mm -hmm. we come here and then we dig and then we put in the seed and then we cover it with soil, and then that's what we do. Okay. What is this? This is um, different kind of seeds, mm -hmm. like. Um this is chick bean and, and this is pin mm. and this bean and this is bean mm. and then then this one is kidney. Divers before wrapping up our today's session I would like to invite Mr. Balahala Yesus a school's principal and who majored in educational leadership and management and he's going to tell us his expertise from the perspective of pedagogical science. Thank you for giving me this chance. Uh, my name is Bala Hailes. I am the school, manage, the, gen, the school general manager here. We are in Zoma school now. What is most important in this school is this is very different area and uh, what makes this area very different is uh, there is learning. So the central focus of this school is learning. So learning by doing. So the students learn by doing and they can see different things. They do have five sense organs and uh, they can use their sense organ to learn something here. So this is uh, a platform which is crafted and developed by the school owner to make learning happen in a better way. So the teacher teach in the classroom at the same time come out and uh, just show different activities for the student and the student learn by seeing, observing, touching, asking, testing and so on. So uh, uh, the most important thing here is there is practical learning, practical learning. So uh, you know what happened here in Ethiopia, most students learn and uh, just go to university. When they come out of university, they become idle. They are engineers, they are looking for job. So the problem is they don't know the surrounding, they don't know the job opportunity. So uh, here the students know the natural environment in different natural vegetations as well. So when they see that, so they, they know the surrounding, they know and they grow well. So that's very, very important, I think. So that is it. You see, uh, there is a saying that if education goes wrong, nothing will go right. So the most important thing of the 21st century pedagogical thinking. So we have to just the students should learn 
uh, in a problem solving way, in a critical thinking, collaboration, creativity. These are the essence of 21st century education. So as an educational uh, expert or uh, as an educational consultant, uh, just learning by doing and uh, learning through collaboration, learning through solving problems. You see, here learning never happen only in the classroom. For instance, when you teach mathematics, you, you can say 2 plus 2 is equal to dash. The students are going to say 4, yeah? So we, we, we want this to be in a case study form, in a practical form. So when the students go to kitchens, specifically speaking, when you come to the in, in Zoma school, so the pedagogical thinking is very important here. So the students should do a lot. The students should know, should test, and they should understand different things. So they learn in the classroom. They bring the, what they learn to the kitchen. They, they bring what they learn to the surrounding, and they triangulate what they have seen. Then they write. Uh, for instance, when they go to milking class, the students not only milk, but also they learn parts of the cow's body, the how the cow... You see the anatomy and how cows appear. And the, the English teacher used the cows to help the kids to write descriptive writing. So the, the science teacher helped to use the garden to elaborate what plants are. The, the, the inside and the outside part of plants, the photosynthesis, the plant's growth process, metamorphosis, and everything which, which they are learning in the classroom will happen outside the classroom. So, uh, pedagogically speaking, this is the, the, the most important area that supports the 21st century teaching learning process to happen in a better way. So, uh, it's not only theory. So, the theoretical aspect is there. The students should know the surroundings. You know what happens when the students grow old? They don't know cow, but they know milk very well. So, now the students are, it's not difficult for our students to know what milk is. The milking process, the cheese, the butter, how the, the, the process is going on and what they eat. And when they go to market, when they go to somewhere, they see different sheep, goat, cabbage and other things. That is not new for them. Because they know how to utilize them, they know how to sow them, they know how to harvest. And finally, they know how to cook it. After they harvest, then they, they just go to kitchen, they cook it, and they make a design, then they eat. There is uh, a virtue that they can share one another when they just cook, when they work together. Collaboration is there, critical thinking is there, uh, problem solving is there. So they solve problems as well. So this is how the, the teaching learning process is practically going on in Zoma school. So this is where, where I want to explain for you. hundred years ago today, when you compare learning from today's learning, it's very different. So 100 years ago today, uh, the teacher stand in front of the student right on the blackboard. So this kind of teaching is a kind of old fashioned. So there is no student engagement. So the era of talk and the, uh, talk and the chalk should be eliminated. Now the students should learn that era is enough. You see, it, it didn't even help us well. Now we have to bring our thinking to the new thought. The new thought of learning, the whole center is like student engagement. So the student engage. When the student engage in learning, when the student engage in activities, teaching happen better. So now the general focus of the, 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 the new thought is not on learning. So what, whatever the, the plan, the classic plan that you prepare, whatever the handwriting, whatever the lesson plan, that really doesn't matter. What matters is the way you deliver it, the way you engage your student in the classroom. So the, the teacher, not, not here, the facilitating role. The teachers play a facilitating role while the student takes the major role in the classroom. So 75% of the classroom is covered by the student engagement rather than the teacher plays a facilitating role. So from the, the school of thought, which is very important now is like teaching by doing. So the student teach and the, so you have observed in the classroom previously, you have seen two teachers, isn't it? Those two teachers, one teach, the other assist. We call it co-teaching. So there is team teaching. Both of us are teaching English, for an instance, and when I'm teaching English, the other is supporting the student. The other observes the gaps. Then in the meantime, they plan for the next time. Then. In that way, they can bring a better student for the, the, the purpose of classroom. And so uh, here we don't have problem. We don't have shortage. For an instance, if a science teacher wants to do a practical activity outside the classroom, they come here and they do something. 
and uh, we don't guide the student. You have seen kids, yeah, in, uh, when you, you observe, you have seen kids. So those kids, what they do, we give them empty paper. Then we, we don't bound them to draw an apple or an orange or whatever the fruit. We give them an empty paper and we say, draw this. That's up to the student to draw. We don't say this is wrong, this is right. So from that drawing, we can take the reality. So when they go to the, the, the sheep, the, the goat, they can go there to write something, to do something, to ask. So the, the learning by questioning is happening here. So this is very important. So as, a, as, as an advice, I advise everybody to come and take something from here and practice there. And the old teaching approach is very different from the new one. Finally, what I want to uh, recommend is, uh, we have been learning in different environments. There are government school, private school in Addis Ababa. But here, when you see this school, the setting is very large. There is a large classroom, different teaching facilities. So education should go this way. So I advise an educational expert, education is not like a shoe factory. So you, you work on the kids, you, you work on the, the, the generation. So our product is generation. So we have to take care of what we are harvesting today to see, because you reap what you sow. By the end of the day, we, 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 you reap what you sow. So from this view, I advise people to come see this school. This is Zoma school. We love the school, so if they come and share different experience, I really appreciate, if, especially the government school, other private schools, they should come and take something because we are all working for generation and we do something better for generation. I really appreciate. Thank you very much. Hope you had a wonderful time with us. Thank you for watching once again. See you next time with another edition. Bye-bye. I am your host, Addis Asafa.